Okay, you guys, so this is my shit, my tips for painting ovals or anything that has ovals in it. What I've got the top here are circles going down to a, a line that goes down to a circle. And what that is, is when you're looking at a cup, if you're looking straight on at your cup, you see a circle, right? So straight on at the cup, you see a circle. As soon as you start to turn that cup sideways, it becomes an oval. When that cup is straight onto you, the lip, the whole out, outside edge of that cup is now just a straight line, right? So it becomes more of an oval as it goes towards you. As it goes down, it becomes more of an oval and then straight into a line if it's straight on. So really looking at the oval in the opening of the cup and seeing if it's a circle, is it a skinny oval? Is it a super, super skinny oval, almost a pancake? Or is it just a line? As you look at your ovals, kind of figure out how tall is it versus how wide. Thank you. Did everybody get that gesso now that wanted it? I haven't yet. Okay, whenever. You're good. All right. And so the oval, again, as you go beneath it, gets bigger until it becomes a circle. So this is just a way of showing you that, you know, those relative sizes, right? How tall is it versus how wide it is, it is, is what you look for when you're looking at a cup. So if you're looking at the photo, how tall is that oval versus how wide it is? That's how you kind of can see whether it's a skinny oval or a big wide circle. Don't trust your eye to think you know what it is because I'm telling you right now, I do this all the time and I'm wrong a lot of the time. It's about a half as high as it is wide. So it's, it's really good to check your work that way. Glasses typically aren't going to be straight up and down. Some of them are, you know, it depends on the glass. Sometimes they are. They usually though come in on a bit of an angle as they go down. And that's true even if they, the glass itself is straight up and down on the sides but you're looking down on it because the top is gonna be bigger than the bottom when you look down on it because of foreshortening. So just kind of measure, you know, are the sides of the cup on an angle or are they straight up and down? The ovals are going to be different on the top of the cup than the bottom of the cup. So if I have a glass right here, this oval at the top of my cup right here where I'm sitting is more narrow than the oval down in the bottom of the cup. If this oval gets higher to my eye line, remember it gets to be a straight line. As it gets farther away from my eye line, it becomes a circle. So that's true with the cup because the top of the cup is here, the bottom of the cup is down here. The oval might be more rounded on the bottom. It might be more ovally, more squished on the top. Just depends on how far you are from that oval. Okay, so getting your ovals right, that can be a trick. The really simple way, just draw a box that is the height and width of your oval, okay? So if I know my oval is half the height of the width, I'll make a box as such. Next, I can start to put an oval within it. So draw your oval within that box-ish. Start somewhere. Now, look at this corner in the top right, the top left, the bottom left, and the bottom right. Those are kind of rounded triangles, right? If those triangles are roughly the same size and shape, then your oval is pretty even. So it's an easier way to try and see the oval is by looking at the negative space around the edges. Now, to get to the nitty gritty, the technical. Actually, there would be perspective on the cup, right? I'm not gonna have you guys do this for this sample and I'm not gonna worry about this for my demo. So don't stress about it. We're gonna do this the box. but. If you're doing a bunch of cups, like one time I drew or I painted this picture that had a bunch of red solo cups and it was like beer pong basically for the technical challenge of it. So I had a whole table full of red solo cups. I had to have perspective because those cups get smaller as they get farther away. So actually it's not really a box that's up and down like this around the top. It's actually a square that's on an angle. So it really goes off into the distance. It looks like this. That's the top of the cup, right? Imagine the cup was square. That's what the top of the cup would look like. So technically, if you wanna be technical, if you're a nerd like me, then you could go in there and then curve your edges and get a more technically correct oval. But I'm telling you right now, sometimes I'm too tired to deal with this and I can't tell the difference really. So it's, it's subtle.
but if you're doing a lot of cups, that does come into play. Now, I showed you two photos, you only have one, but the first photo um, I showed you was the one you guys all have, which has water in the cup. The next one I showed you, one of the next ones I showed you was an empty cup. So up here, I have an empty cup. And what you'll usually see with an empty glass, depending on how thick the glass is, I mean, this is plastic, it's pretty thin, you won't notice it, but if it's a thick glass, what happens is, you'll actually see the water line across the front, or you'll see the front of the glass, like the bottom rim, you'll see the whole thing go from edge to edge across the bottom. So if this is the side of the cup, and this is the side of the cup, and this is the bottom of the cup, that whole front edge, you'll see it, it'll just be like a smile. It'll go from side to side and touch the edges. But then there's an oval inside too, because this is the bottom of the cup that I'm seeing through it, because it's translucent. That, weirdly, sits on top of the line I just drew. So I like to call it an egg in a hammock. It's like there's a little egg sitting in a hammock. And the reason you see the whole sides of the, that oval that doesn't touch the edge of the cup is because there's thick glass. So, you know, there's a little bit of breathing room between the bottom of the cup and that. That's why that does that. But it's kind of a weird thing to, to look at at first. So knowing that helps. Even on this cup, when I was painting it, I see that a little bit. But it's so subtle because this plastic is very thin. But you'll see it more when you see liquid inside. Now, when there's liquid inside, the bottom of the cup changes altogether. It might just be a straight line across. It's usually not a perfectly straight line, though. Here's the edge of my glass. My edge of my glass goes down. Here's the bottom of my glass. Now, if there's any thickness to the bottom, I draw that line across. It goes from edge to edge. And then what usually happens, if because there's a, you know, a little bit of a curve in the bottom, even when there's water, you'll see it go across and it'll kind of be like a, like a moustache. It comes down, then it goes up in the center, and it goes down, and it comes back up. Sometimes, depending on the glass, you'll also see that egg floating in the middle, the egg of the bottom. We will not see that in this picture. But in, in thick beer glasses, for example, you almost always see that. So look at, look at your reference. So study in edges. You'll see in this um, sphere that I painted, look in the center of the sphere. It says soft edge, and there's a circle. Now that's where the transition between the shadow and the light start to hit, and it's a gentle transition from dark to light. It just fades in from one value to another. If you look at the bottom, and also that's true, sorry, to the top left, that's also a soft edge. If you look at the bottom circle, it's kind of covering two very hard edges where the shadow hits the bottom of the sphere. That goes directly from one value to another without much shading at all. Look at this one on the right the lost edge. Do you see why it's called lost edge? You don't even really see the edge because the value is the same between the background and the sphere. So that's what we call lost edge. Now, when I look at um, different textures, if I want something to look really shiny and glossy, I should have high contrast and some harder edges with soft edges mixed in. That tends to help make things look a little shinier and glossier. If it's more matte, I have not the contrast. I might still have some hard edges, but maybe the edges are a little bit softer overall. Not as many hard edges and less contrast. If I wanna do something textured like, like fur or something, you might still have a few hard edges, but there's quite a few soft edges and there still could be some um, high contrast, but not as high contrast as the shiny. The shiny objects like water, glass, metal, those have the highest contrast and usually the sharpest edges next to the softest edges.